Good morning, a uh, warm welcome to all the panelists for the seventh edition of the Data Center India 2020. I welcome our chief guest, Sri Ajay Prakash Saini, IAS Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and IT, Government of India. Sir, thank you very much for taking out from busy schedule, taking out few times to address us. We were just chit chatting as TV sir said that, you know, last year it was the uh, real event at uh, Shangri La. As Manoj said that he could not join because he had to fly down to Mumbai. But today, Manoj is also one of the biggest data center in Mumbai is along with us and us. We have Sri Vivek Banjalji, Director CFA Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited. Sir, welcome to the data center event. We also have Ravinder Pal Singh, who is the CIO of Vistara Airlines, sir. The one of the airlines who's recently started and doing very well in the industry, sir. TV Ramchandran, sir, doesn't need any introduction. As you all know, TV, sir, being in the industry for the more than uh, three decades and now presently the president of Broadband India Forum. Without taking much of your time, TV, sir, over to you to welcome and give you a welcome address. TV, sir. Thank you, Shashi. Um, good morning to you all, respected chief guest, esteemed dignitaries on the panel, uh, it's a really most opportune to have this, the seventh edition, when our respected chief guest could find time, squeeze time to be with us for this important event. Because this is more timely than ever before, with so much happening on the COVID impacted environment, all of which would not have happened. The, the way we have been carrying on the economy and us day-to-day -day life has all been possible because of telecom and IT. And that is what is keeping us going. And that's where we come in from data centers. I would not take too much time except to take up two, three points, which I'm sure would be examined during the course of this uh, deliberations today. First and foremost, today, data center is no more what it was in the past, a mere storage facility. Today, it's core to the fundamental business plan. It is now every entity, business entity, is seeing it as a crucial element of the business strategy. So it's no longer at a periphery. Same thing that the fact that data center is vital for digital infrastructure. Digital infrastructure is not anymore just confined to towers and fiber. As IT has duly pointed out, eloquently pointed out a year or so ago, defined IT infrastructure, digital infrastructure, they defined it as including data centers, including public Wi Fi, including satellite communications. Everything has to pitch in in a proportionate and equitable manner, not equal but equitable manner to make broadband happen. Broadband cannot happen without data centers. And we need to bear that in mind today in the context of data centers. And we, I would also like to say 
the very concept of data centers is also continuously evolving and we need to keep with the technology of the times. We are no longer just talking of brick and mortar data centers. We are talking of the growth of the hybrid data centers, hybrid uh, cloud and normal data centers. We are talking today of edge centers. We envisage edge centers mushrooming everywhere. And uh, we had, it is emphasized that a debt, a, a edge data center would be that maybe even in a tower when we go, every tower. Concurrently, Wi-Fi is going to bloom everywhere. The minister talked the other day about 10 million or 1 crore Wi-Fi hotspots, public PM Vani hotspots. It's a brilliant innovation of India. It's going to be a first time ever, the PM Vani, and that's going to be so synergistic with data centers. You're probably going to talk, in effect, when you talk of 10 million uh, public Vani, PM Vani hotspots, you are practically talking of equal number of that center of data growth centers. Because each one is a data center. So keeping that in mind, I think the growth is enormous. As Meiti has pointed out, a CHR of about 25% is a no-brainer. It's going to happen anyway. And we all need to be on that. Uh, we, not, we need to make it grow beautifully and harmoniously with the ecosystem. And India needs to be at the top place in the world environment. It's already the most preferred destination for business outsourcing. That will happen with this concurrently as local data centers grow. My only last plea for the audience and for the, all the government dignitaries is, let us make the business capability for data centers even more attractive and viable, so that you will not be able to stop the investors from breaking open the doors and coming in to invest. Once and all these, when they become edge data centers, it becomes even more viable. So the need to continuously keep refining the business viability potential is also there. With these initial remarks, I, I now respectfully invite uh, Mr. Ajay Sani, Secretary Mehdi, who is also who has been the prime mover for the data center policy, which is a draft data center policy put out, a great venture which we laud fully. We request him to say a few words to the gathering. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ramchandran, and uh, a good morning to uh, Mr. Shashi Dharan, uh, to Manoj Palji, to Ravinder Ji, and uh, other dignitaries who are uh, there in this uh, program. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to have this uh, virtual conference uh, and keep the series an unbroken series. Uh, I think we have managed uh, very well in India uh, to uh, take the challenges uh, posed by uh, COVID pandemic in our stride. Uh, the, uh, and we have seen amazing amount of innovation uh, uh, happen as well. Uh, I think IT industry, uh, you know, uh, in India uh, that serves uh, clients uh, from the Fortune 500 uh, almost in all continents, a uh, um, large number of countries, uh, could actually keep their services unbroken and uh, without uh, much of a, uh, uh, without really any visible setback in spite of uh, you know going through such a stringent lockdown that uh, at one point of time only two to three percent of their employees were able to come to the offices and that too to keep the infrastructure running to keep uh, keep to make it possible for their uh, people to keep working uh, from homes uh, sim similarly uh, within the government uh, we were fortunate to have uh, uh, something like e-office, which was already available, uh, but still 50% of the files used to be in physical form. And then when it came to this uh, uh, crisis uh, situation, within 48 hours, uh, we were able to switch over seamlessly <coughs> to uh, entirely uh, working from homes, uh, initiating the files, uh, do complete process, uh, entirely uh, digital. Uh, and a similar thing we saw in, uh, uh, you know, we 
working uh, with um, uh, young professionals who came forward to um, make an app for uh, the pandemic management, Arogya Setu. It was just about 15 to 18 uh, people, youngsters from the private sector that came together as volunteers. Uh, we joined them uh, with a few volunteers from within the government. Uh, uh, I am one of the volunteers also. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know, this volunteer uh, group actually within uh, three weeks was able to make an app which could, uh, uh, you know, and we thoroughly tested it, thoroughly tested the backend uh, for its robustness uh, and uh, could go to uh, uh, 1 crore downloads, 5 crore downloads, 10 crore downloads, 5 crore in uh, 13 days and 10 crore in uh, 40 days. So then now it's at 16.5 and all of this, again, those youngsters were all working from their hometowns. They were not in offices. They were all separately, they were all in their own locations and yet they could come up with such a fabulous and sophisticated app. And then you architect things uh, so that so many downloads could be managed. All of this basically because we, we have very good broadband, we have very good connectivity here in India. And we have data centers that are able to support this kind of, uh, you know, humongous amount of uh, activity, uh, both within the government and uh, in government community cloud, uh, uh, for which we have, uh, you know, we had earlier 13 entities that were impaneled. We are continuing with the impanelment process. We are hoping that many, many more entities will become part of the government community cloud. And then... Of course, we have such a burgeoning, massive growth happening in the private sector. Every day we uh, hear about uh, new data center parks and new uh, data centers and the expansion of capacity and the uh, coming in of, uh, you know, different uh, platforms. Um, uh, the, each one of the uh, go, uh, global majors is here. And many of them actually depend on uh, infrastructure that is set up by Indian entrepreneurs. Many of them are not directly setting up their uh, their infrastructure. They are actually depending on many, many of them. And Manojji will know and many others in this business know it very well. And that, uh, uh, you know, it's a combination of someone who brings in the the uh, the software uh, uh, to run the uh, center and uh, many others are investing in those uh, in the physical infrastructure and yet others are investing in the data center parks uh, which uh, uh, you know and assure everyone that uh, power supply and uh, you know various other aspects are all uh, taken care of and uh, so it's it's a confluence of uh, um, many forces many investments that actually goes to make a successful large scale uh, data center. Uh, we used to count data center capacities in, you know, number of uh, how much is the raised floor area and then how many racks and how many servers and then how many VMs and all that. I think we have rightly moved to a, a, a metric of uh, how many megawatts and uh, when are we getting to a gigawatt? So that itself is a is a huge change. So people now talk about uh, you know when are we getting to the um, individual major investors, uh, major entities that are coming into this uh, that we are currently or we are reaching uh, 100 megawatt and we have uh, plans to do a 10x in so much time and all that. So that is the kind of. Um, uh, uh, ecosystem that uh, is happening. We have done uh, uh, significant consultations uh, within the government. Uh, we came out with a, a data center, uh, uh, you know, a paper in which we are we are we have sought uh, inputs from various uh, entities, and uh, we will also be coming out uh, uh, shortly with. Uh, we we'll start working on a scheme which uh, you know can help. Uh, help us uh, uh, 
uh, walk in step with uh, many of the uh, investors look at what are the pain points especially you know there many investments will happen on their own because it's time for india to to get into data centers there is a huge demand uh, we expect massive demand to come in uh, with the uh, personal uh, uh, data protection uh, bill uh, in parliament with the uh, issues around non personal data being debated and we are arriving at the policy stance uh, on that and uh, with the uh, increasing emphasis on data governance as well as on uh, uh, on the uh, uh, you know of uh, establishment of uh, domain wide platforms like uh, the national public uh, digital health uh, platform and the uh, similarly we will we'll be having soon uh, many more platforms we already are aware of many of the existing platforms like aadhar upi government e marketplace gem gstn plus plus with many other things added to gstn and now the health platform uh, uh, transportation uh, platform a platform in education a platform in uh, agriculture and the primary sector another platform in logistics another platform in uh, an interoperable criminal justice uh, system another one that connects jobs and skills and many more and these are all nationwide ecosystems these are all on the model of aadhar these are all on the model of upi these are uh, things that will unleash immense amount of uh, uh, you know activity economic activity in the country and create opportunities for businesses and all of these will require support from the data centers as well as from the networks uh that help us uh, sort of communicate uh, effectively uh, on uh, i truly believe that this is uh, going to be india's decade we need investments in this uh, the businesses must go global must go digital and we must create our digital uh, businesses that have the muscle to uh, first serve the market in india and grow to serve markets uh, globally uh, there is no reason why indian entities will not become uh, the among the dominant entities in healthcare in education in agriculture and allied areas in uh, even in criminal justice system and many many other areas i think it's time for us to move very aggressively into all of this Uh, a couple of days back uh, we have also come out with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, eoi we have a request for an expression of interest uh, to set up fabs in india uh, to even for indian entities that are interested in buying a fab abroad we have requested for an expression of interest so we are moving in all of these directions and data centers is something which is especially very important and pivotal to this activity so uh, wish you uh, very good uh, deliberations and uh, you know uh, let's uh, let's get into it uh, with uh, 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 at this point when uh, you know the ones that enter today are going to be the billionaires of tomorrow uh, please mark my words if you are interested in business don't enter only what is already an established and well settled business please look at the sunrise sectors this is a sunrise sector and this is the sunrise time for india please make the best use of these opportunities and come and participate in this huge growth that we are going to witness thank you thank you thank you sir fantastic thank, th and thank you sir thank you so much sir just i'll take 2 minutes sir secretary sir thank you very much joining i'm sure um, uh, one of the biggest data center uh, manoj ji and vivek ji and they may have one or two question to ask you so before we move manoj do you want to ask any question to sir uh no thank you sir we spoke the other day also we discussed the other day i think the data center policy is going the right way uh, the draft and we suggest all areas which include some policy changes on dot front also is just the question of when we see the actual impact on it 
otherwise your policy is very well drafted uh, we fully support that we have given our inputs and let's see how quickly we can uh, replicate that we have requested that if you can set up a uh, benchmark every monthly or quarterly you said that again okay, maharashtra is 27 out of 100 somebody is 80 out of 100 and there is a competition between the states that will really drive the states uh, to improve which we have seen on the health side on the cleanliness side has really had a big impact because of competition but i think the country is in the right track and we uh, envisage that huge investment is going to happen we are very we are pleasingly looking forward to the new policy coming into effect thank you sir manoj ji within december we are also coming out with a draft uh, uh, you know national blockchain um, uh, strategy and uh, again we'll require a huge uh, infrastructure uh, uh, you know to support uh, what we have in mind uh, so be on the lookout i have a series of uh, papers and policies which are uh, sort of taking shape and uh, they'll be out soon thank you sir Great. thank you, thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir Now Excellent. we move to the next speaker. I request Vivek Bhattacharya, Director, Sri Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited, to address the gathering. Namaskar. Good morning, everyone. 2020 will be remembered for centuries, but for all wrong reasons. Because COVID-19 played havoc in this 2020. But the IT community. we people to remember 2020 for other many other reasons because i have many projects any innovative ideas which were there but probably would have taken a couple of years to implement we saw them into converting into reality in a couple of quarters itself because the situation forced us to what we uh, actually Uh, uh, would have required, but not have envisaged that it is so useful. I'll give you one example from BSNL itself. We were uh, thinking of uh, moving to the e-office pan India basis, despite having such a large geography to be covered. And uh, uh, we thought that okay, let us start with the corporate office because this is something which can have only a you know a, a top-down approach for a successful implementation. and we fixed the date that in the first quarter of 2020 21 financial year we will move to the e office and we were doing round with the preparations and suddenly this lockdown came and you won't believe that before march 31st itself all everyone in the corporate office was on the e office platform so much so that all the training also was imparted uh, with the virtual conferences only and uh, uh, as sani sahab rightly said that there were hardly a couple of people coming to office for almost next two to three months we found that there is not a single file or a single issue which is getting stuck up because people are not there in the offices and this went on because a lot of people commute from noida and gurugram and because they are being in the different states than uh, delhi so everywhere the lockdown rules were you know different and changing every week from week but we never had any any single disruption in the working and finally we implemented by today when i am speaking to you in all the states where bsnl operates on the e office so i would not have imagined that this we would be doing uh, starting in a calendar year and completing within the two quarters of the time this is what this this pandemic has uh, taught us and uh, how it community will remember this year 2020 now to make this forward because the idea has been implemented we see that the mass scale penetration to all the geographies to everyone and the kind of it infrastructure requirement data center uh, this forum is probably rightly and very timely organized uh, that before we jump on to 2021 we are discussing that how this infrastructure is to be carried forward for all the ideas which we have implemented to penetrate them to the last person because there are still uh, uh, an, a, a exponential growth which is hidden and yet to be i would say blast uh, what we have seen in 
we expect that strong demand for data center space combined with limitation on supply capacity and the pre existing skill shortage in this sector will result in an upward price pressure also if we contain ourselves with the large data center projects only and therefore we need to see that this data center theory is not only remain concentrated in select metros but also moves down to every state i will say not only every state but the metros of the every state because every state has five six important towns which cater to the state for 60 70% of such usage and therefore this is the ideal opportunity for the data center sector to explore the modern method of constructions in order to remove this risk inherent in the site based construction operation post covid and this modular building and prefabrication which will take some time to grasp into but will resonate more clearly because there is what lies the mass scale penetration of the it enablement and bridge the digital divide which we call as sari sahab has rightly said that india is going to be the can be the global leader in this yes i agree because the kind of volumes we have the kind of complicated use cases we have and the kind of talent pool we have if we are successful in india we can very well and very easily expand to other geographies in the globe because ours is one of the most tough testing bed when we go live for anything in our indian environment i will i'll put that maybe uh, in 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 uh, a year or couple of years to come these it tools will be as as essential a commodity to individuals as we call roti kapda or makan because probably uh, uh, people will not be able to survive without having a connectivity and therefore both the cloud expertise as well as the telecom connectivity provider have to come together to make sure that we don't disappoint our users i am seeing in last almost a year's time now every new business proposition which comes to us requiring a connectivity is now talking almost 9 out of 10 proposals they talk about that where the application will rest they say on cloud and when we ask that you want to rest it on a cloud and how do you want to spread out the connectivity then they say sir the kind of volume we are expecting is not possible from half a dozen data center which you have we want a data center in every state and maybe more than one in some of the states and so therefore bsnl has come out with a co location policy also uh, in the month of uh, november in which we are offering all our ready built space which is having both space with uninterrupted power supply as well as the plug and play media of any bandwidth on the locations in every town where you feel you have a business case to iron out and simplify this partnership to grow we have announced the commercials the tariffs the name of some 300 or 350 odd cities so wherever you feel that you need any space as small as 1000 square odd feet to 5000 10000 square feet and probably i am ready if you ask for it today i am ready yesterday so this is what i feel as a as a solution provider we can work together and take this data center to the next level in the next year 
and I do hope that we will be celebrating for the first time the closer of the year rather than beginning of a new year. Everyone is waiting when this 2020 gets over because this is what we are all looking for. But to make it happen, we have to make sure that the data centers, age data centers and data center to every district, every state is something which and we can always have a cluster of cloud now having a connectivity within themselves and sharing the resources within those data centers. So the possibilities are enormous and uh, we have seen uh, that now even for our BSNL one purposes, sometimes we are not going in for putting up my own data center at a new place, but by utilizing it at a existing data center, the cloud services and taking it to a small area so that the connectivity to individuals is served by a three tire system where the ultimate customer is connected to my the nearest node which is available in a range of 100 kilometers and not that everything is coming to delhi mumbai bangalore or you know hyderabad places like those so what i feel that today there is a very strong need and because we have a ready built talent business use case and the infrastructure, we should all join hands, put together all our resources, and then come up with a solution which is as user friendly as our customer will expect. And this will also, I have seen that the implementation part, as the uh, secretary Mighty said, that Aragya Setu could have uh, 10 crore users in. A time of three weeks or four weeks. This is only possible when we have a strong chain of the application residing at each geography. Therefore, the localized connectivity will also make sure that the today's bandwidth requirement is not taken everything from the end user to a metro place, but it is served from the local place. Be it education, which is coming a very, very big way. Entertainment had always been there. The closure of multiplexes brought the OTT and the video content to the forefront. Health is another sector where we need to see that everyone is served timely, suitably, and with proper care. And therefore, there is, there is no limit to how much we can expand. So, with this, I conclude my uh, thought today and again re offer that please come join hands. Mm -hmm. We have a ready infrastructure for all of us to be together and serve our customer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vivek Banjalji. Thank you very much for sharing your views on the data center event. Thank you very much. May now we move to the next speaker. May I request Sri Gola Kumar Simli, who is the CTO of Passport Seva Project, Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. Welcome, Golakji. I request you to address the gathering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, all the panelists, the Sri Sasidharan uh, and his team, for inviting me to speak into this data center event. Uh, we are listening to uh, our secretary, sir, from uh, METI. And we are also uh, listening about how is that government of India at large, you know, planning on the data center front, uh, cloud enabled data center front. But I have three, four things uh, to mention here, uh, especially uh, the learnings we carry or uh, the one which we are working uh, is passport seva program. And, and the first and Foremost thing is, you no, know, the new data center, uh, whatever we design today, or that we call modern data center, uh, must be focused on in a way saying that, you no, know, it it should uh, be a, a kind of, uh, it should start from data consumers and then towards uh, data source. I mean, the design should be so that. The data center should be architect 
it so that uh, the data consumers comes first and then you go towards the data source i mean how do you deliver to the data consumers from the data source and accordingly the architecture of the data center modern data center has to be looked into earlier it was other way in fact if you ask me the legacy part or the traditional data centers are mostly it driven no it's mostly uh, kind of a uh, uh, kind of a data warehouse it, it's most of a static in nature but now we have to completely shift from there uh, saying that it must be uh, user driven it must be data consumers driven and data is the focus no how do you look into the data at large right that's the first point uh, no i would like to bring here the second point uh, it's also important saying that uh, the data center whatever we create today it must be able to identify the kind of users we are having not only the kind of users but also their unique requirements let me give an example for an example uh, my own passport data center if i say i have various kind of users police authorities could be one of my users uh, the department post could be another user india security uh, press nasik could be another user citizen at large are the core of the data centers the other set of users so is that uh, the data center which i have created is doing justice to each of these categories of users for an example someone was saying that uh, uh, from i think from our bsnl colleague saying that if a if a particular uh, citizen seeking a passport services living aside let's say some uh, geographical uh, 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 corner of the country let's say uh, either in ladakh le or uh, kind of a uh, mount abu or this kind of a geographical area is that uh, i am able to give the same experience to the users visa vis a user applying for a passport services uh, let's say in delhi or mumbai or in kolkata is that my data center is capable to do that is that my application which is hosted in the data center is capable to do that and it actually i am doing that i mean uh, a, a citizen applying for a passport services doesn't feel a difference whether i am applying in jharkhand or in mumbai or in delhi there is a seamless experience for everyone so the data center architecture must be able to identify that and that is the core area as per me that is the focus area one should focus on the uh, second uh, area which we have uh, generally seen that you no know, uh, whenever we uh, create this kind of a traditional data center is uh, they are not uh, able to kind of adapt they are not able to kind of a uh, agile enough to gel uh, into the new requirement or new business requirement and again uh, uh, what i foresee is that uh, you no know, the data center uh today's data center whether uh, it's a cloud variance data center or let's say i am designing a uh, my own on premises data centers uh it should be like a living being no uh, it's like a uh, breathing uh, uh, kind of a living being who is a breathing organism and uh, who can actually detects uh, the the kind of if there is something change happening on my body parts i should be able to detect so it is similar to that i mean the data center must be able to detect the business requirements the changes in the business requirement not only it should be able to detect but it should also should be able to adapt it in terms of resource allocation in terms of orchestration in terms of application modernization so whatever i say it should be able to do that and not only that is one area but the other area also it is very important said it should be continuously able to learn and and adapt to the changes that is another very important area as i said suppose suddenly i have a demand increase in uh, passport services and especially it happens no during summer season we witness a huge spike in the demand now is that my data center is automatically able to adapt to that kind of a demand variation is that we let the architecture or or the design which i have uh, given and uh, or taken as part of the data center design is able to it stand the load that kind of a sudden variance in the load so another two area which is very important when we design a modern data center is 
i must be able to identify my workload whether it is a static workload whether it is a dynamic workload how is the load variance and uh, variance happening over a year or over a time or or kind of as i said sudden kind of a demand and a spike so that workload i must be able to identify in terms of demand not only in terms of demand but also in terms of my fiduciary and not fiduciary workload which is again very important in terms of data center designing aspect saying that what kind of load which is very critical for me which is very sovereign for me which is very kind of a uh, fiduciary for me no is that i am able to identify that load when i am designing the uh, the data center so that uh, no tomorrow if i want to segregate between a uh, kind of a sovereign and non sovereign kind of a load and some of our panelists uh, i think was speaking say that when this pandemic hit us suddenly uh, almost all of us you no know, uh, whether it is external affairs or uh, meti or everybody i mean every one of us uh, we are in a uh, kind of a fix saying that how do i access my corporate uh, network how do i access my corporate uh, data center how do i access my corporate application now if that kind of a sudden requirement hit us is that your data center is agile enough to give me that kind of a uh, access and authorization that kind of a workload segregation that kind of training and and capacity building for the workforce which which i did in fact uh, when the pandemic hit us uh, it, it took for, it took me for 5 days to only 5 days to uh, uh, immediately adapt into the new scenario and probably passport was one of the services not only in india but globally too within 5 days we are absolutely kind of a capable to, to do the services uh, as usual no before pandemic era kind of a thing and this was only possible because that is the kind of architecture we have that is the kind of uh, security and other aspect of it when we design our data center we have uh, looked through it right so that is another very uh, important area uh, you no know, one uh, must see and the third thing you know i always say that whenever uh, these kind of a modern uh, data center we look into or the cloud variants we look into uh we must come out now it is high time saying that we must come out from a system level approach to ecosystem kind of approach and when i say so uh meaning to say that it not only serves your consumers beneficiaries citizen at large but apart from that all your stakeholders you know it is able to uh, service and survive it is also uh, in a way as in when you want to uh, kind of a extend expand enhance it should be able to adapt agile enough to jail uh, uh, into a new kind of a business requirement agile enough to adapt new and emerging technology very important for an example today whatever i am doing the social media sentiments analytics part of it i have taken a part of cloud variance now you can tell me that suddenly how can you approach to a cloud i mean is that possible no it is absolutely not possible unless you have a learning curve unless you have a maturity curve suddenly you cannot go into a cloud that means you are fully and solely kind of a control of all your data points control of all your processes at large control of all your compliances at large then only probably you can approach to cloud variants right and that i did when i even i was connecting to my all global embassy and consulate so these are the aspects we must look into whether i am looking for a on premises data center whether i am looking uh, for a uh, hybrid kind of a cloud approach which probably the need of the day and uh, kind of a take my word saying that uh, the public sector at large or the government at large or the ministry is large now we must take a cloud hybrid approach of a data center which we are creating today or tomorrow so these are the points uh, and i i thought i'll uh, try to bring in and thank you once again mr sasi and your entire team bringing such a beautiful event and uh, informative event thank you
Mr. Sir, your mic is mute. Yeah, yeah. I, I said thank you very much, uh, Golak ji. Thank you very much for taking our time and uh, sharing your views. Now we move to the next speaker. My request is Manoj Paul, managing director, GP India, to address the gathering. Manoj. Yeah. Good morning, everyone, and thanks uh, for the exhibition and Sashi for giving me the opportunity to speak at this forum. Uh, Sashi and I have been together working on such events for the last 20 years plus and i remember it was in 1999 time frame when i used to speak about broadband that time india was migrating from a 64 kbps dial up to a 128 256 512 kbps yes. dsl broadband <laughs> uh, fast forward today we are here discussing about data centers discussing about hybrid cloud technology and uh, that has been a great transformation a great journey and it has been a great association with Sashi. And again, Sashi, thanks for inviting me today. Welcome, Manoj. Welcome. The data center industry in the last 10 years have evolved in a major way. Uh, when GPX uh, came into India in around 2012, uh, we were the first data center, Uptime Institute certified uh, tier 4, offering 5 9 uh, uptime commitment. And in fact, what it did was that because of its unique architecture, deployment of very high, uh, reliable and uh, sophisticated equipment, high level of automation, uh, it gave a lot of confidence to the international cloud service providers, OTTs and others who were otherwise servicing India from their data centers in uh, Singapore, Hong Kong or in other parts of the world to set up their POP in India. In fact, today we have uh, something around eight cloud service providers, all the major OTTs and the CDNs uh, having their edge pops in our data center catering to the India market and many of them, their first pop in India has been in our data center. So quality of data center really plays a major role in ensuring that it gives confidence to uh, service providers to locate their uh, content within India not so much about re regulation and policies that, okay, this data has to be in India and all that. So I think the data center service provider should be focusing on this aspect, how we can bring in efficiency and make India a hub for data centers, for content, not only for catering to the Indian market, but also uh, to other parts of the world. However, in the last four or five years, things have changed. Not only many new data centers have come up, and uh, many of them are of large capacities going up to even 20, 30 megawatt. Of course, there are announcements of 100 megawatt data centers, but they are yet to uh, go to that capacity. What has majorly also happened is the quality of data centers has actually improved a lot over the last uh, four or five years. And today, India, mm, Indian data centers are quite comparable to the data centers uh, across the world. Parallelly, the edge data center phenomena has been picking up uh, in India also. Uh, edge data centers are where, where uh, the cloud service providers connect with the enterprise customers over the lease line or uh, MPLS uh, uh, connection. Uh, it is also the place where the OTT, the content providers, the uh, media companies, they connect with the eyeball network, which is the ISPs and the telecom service providers. So like in, the, in uh, GPX, we have around three, 130 ISPs and telecom service providers connecting all the major content providers like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and exchanging traffic, exchanging content. The biggest advantage of doing that is that now there's a direct connection between uh, the content provider and the carriers and the ISP. So it doesn't go through multiple levels of carriers and hence the user experience is much better and it also helps to reduce the cost of distributing the content and distributing the which is enabling many of the ISPs to really bring down their costs or at least offer much higher downloads in a month uh, than that what they were able to do earlier. So the data centers growth predominantly over the last four or five years has been because of the major cloud uh, service providers taking up huge capacities uh, 
in India and around 50-60% or even more in some cases, uh, space has been taken over by these cloud service providers. However, four or five years back, it used to be the BFSI and other companies who were the major consumers of uh, our data centers. With COVID, things are changing. Most enterprises, whether it's large, medium or small, have realized that digital is the way to go. They need to digitize not only their front end, how they connect with their customers, but also digitize how they do operations, how their employees connect to the network, how the billing happens, how customer care takes place and everything. In fact, a couple of weeks back, I was pleasantly surprised that my nearby Kirana store, who till recently was not willing to take even a credit card or allow me to pay through Paytm, sent me a link which enabled me to go to a site where he had listed down all the products that he had and I could order online and pay online. So even the smallest of the enterprises are realizing that digital is necessary for survival and that is really going to have a big trigger on both in terms of deployment of, space, uh, of uh, IT infrastructure and also for data center space. So what is going to happen is most of the enterprises are going to go the hybrid way. That is what Mr. Golak Simli was talking about some time back. What enterprises are going to realize is that there are some applications which if they host it on their own servers and have those servers sweat for say four or five years, it's going to be more economical than putting everything on the cloud. So with a hybrid architecture coming in, enterprises will have the flexibility to have something on their own premises, on their own equipment, something which gets used very often, but at the same time have the flexibility of putting certain applications on the cloud and leveraging the flexibility that cloud provides, which uh, the passport office had a problem wherein in case the, cloud, the demand goes up, you can always leverage the cloud infrastructure to cater to the sudden increase in demand and then switch off the cloud and go back to your internal infrastructure for maintaining and catering to the day-to-day -day requirement. That's the most economical and most uh, uh, prudent way of having an infrastructure, IT infrastructure laid out, uh, which helps you to go up, scale up and scale down. What also happened during uh, COVID was many enterprises who had their on-prem data centers faced a lot of challenges in maintaining that data centers because their employees could not come to the data center to maintain it, to run it, and to fix some problems. Also, the internet bandwidth that came to their data centers or their offices was not sufficient for uh, taking the load of the huge amount of workflow traffic, work from home traffic that was coming in from uh, employees who were now working from home instead of connecting to the servers from their offices. So the enterprises are now realizing that it would be much more prudent for them to have their in-house data centers located in a third-party data center like GPX, wherein they have access to, say, the 130 ISPs and 12 telecom service providers who can provide bandwidth in a matter of few hours, and support is always available 24 by 7, so that even if their employees cannot reach to take care of any uh, eventuality, there are technical staff available in the data centers to uh, take care of uh, those uh, scenarios. So it's hybrid and it's more or less moving to a third party data center, which is going to be the strategy for the years to come. But what is also emerging is a multi-cloud scenario where enterprises are considering the option of using multiple clouds instead of depending on only one cloud. We believe that uh, giving options to customers really helps adoption. A multi-cloud option using a cloud uh, exchange, which uh, GPX launched a few uh, months back, gives the flexibility to enterprises to connect on a single port, but have access to multiple clouds on the single port itself, and then move loads from one service provider to the other service provider, depending on service levels and other criteria that they might have. <clears throat> so uh, we believe that hybrid cloud and multi-cloud is going to be the way to go, and that is going to drive adoption of uh, data centers as a st strategy for hosting your in-house uh, data centers, in-house uh, IT infrastructure, and leveraging cloud to maintain, uh, bring in efficiency into your operations so that you can scale up and scale down and use uh, the cloud wherever you want it, especially for things like uh, the disaster recovery where 
uh, the servers and the uh, and the storage is really very rarely used. It's better to be there on the to be put on the uh, cloud rather than dedicate your hardware and upgrade your hardware and maintain that hardware on an ongoing basis for something that can easily be done much more cost efficiently on the cloud. That's what I had to share in the 10 12 minutes that Shashi gave me to me to share. And uh, thanks again, Shashi, for inviting me and uh, wish uh, Bharat Exhibition for having a successful uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. so much for taking our time and addressing the gathering. Now we move to the next speaker, Ravinder Pal Singh, who is the CIO and Innovation Officer of Vistara Airlines, which I like the most. I travel every time on Vistara. They need to increase their uh, capacity to some of the cities, and I hope that will happen soon. So over to you, Ravi. Thank you, Sashiji. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor. Uh, I'm not going to speak as an aviator. I'm, I'm, I'll try to speak as a technologist. Manoj did a wonderful job and a fabulous job of painting a picture. Um, I pride myself um, uh, you know, as, as a person who, who brought cloud into mainstream. Uh, I never, 14 years back when I actually created uh, first cloud architecture and implemented in a um, in a in a company whose chairman believed me, I never thought it would take 14 years for people to to adopt cloud in such a way. But but that's not about. Let's talk about India, uh, because I I passionately feel not only as an Indian but as a technologist that India is on the curves uh, uh, of of doing something remarkable and and beat all the really really large players um, uh, who are currently um, uh, wrapping up a data center with the word cloud. Very few are basically cloud-based uh, compute. So, so I'll make uh, four quick points, and I'm not going to take much of much of the time. Uh, 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 four four quick points, mostly related to uh, uh, my vision of how cloud and how India will um, India can run and and dictate and decide uh, future of compute. First, cost of compute, um, even though economically it has come down dramatically in last decade. It is still not being Bharat or Indianized. Okay? It's still very, very high from an Indian perspective. So this is a great, great opportunity uh, for Indian homegrown organic uh, data center providers uh, to do something remarkable. And it is a possibility. It, it, it is a huge possibility because of the cost of human resources, um, you know, uh, cost of uh, 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 implementation. Uh, cost of uh, technology know-how, with the exception of a few things, that the cost of power in India is very, very high. So that that is something which we need to figure out. Uh, so first point is cost of compute has to tremendously come down. And if India leads that, then everything will be gravitated towards India. Uh, if, 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 if as an Indian technologist, we can figure out cost of compute to be tremendously lower than what it is now today globally. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, you know, Design of compute will be distributed. Okay, I actually say cloud all is already a legacy. Okay, and um, the future design of a compute will be distributed. Now, honorable secretary actually mentioned something about blockchain. Blockchain is one one type of of, of an architecture which is based on distributed computing. I'm bullish about blockchain, but this forum is not about me. This forum is about possibility of having multiple forms of distributed computing. I'm certain that distributed computing will be uh, will take Cloud and I, I call cloud in current form as as just uh, in fancy in, in fancy, a very very initial state of distributed computing. Uh, India as a design, if you look at India as a democracy per se, you know this centralized notion doesn't fit India. Just just how our constitution is, just how our uh, just how our utilization of compute is. Uh, so 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 inherently for the first time, uh, distributed computing. And, and India's democratic setup uh, will mix together. Now, if it mix uh, and if it becomes a sort of a blockchain, which is a node-based architecture, um, that would be great. So cloud is already a legacy. I think our policy making and, 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 and folks like Manoj uh, should lead India into, um, into high performance distributed computing, which is node-based, which is intelligent node-based. And the more intelligent node-based it becomes, um, this would be a second opportunity for India to create a curve which would be difficult for for globe or world to beat so that's my second point uh, my third point is uh, texture of data will move towards human and machine harmony okay now this is a debatable topic because the moment 
you, we talk about intelligent machines, the moment we actually talk about robotics or something like that, you know, it becomes uh, a, a notion, you know, why we are moving towards it and, and people connect it with politics of data or employment. But the fact is that uh, number of machines, uh, you know, whether it is mixers, whether it is grinders, whether it is uh, ACs, uh, you know, whether it is cars, whether it is two levers, uh, uh, you know, two wheelers and, and so and so forth. You know, each and every one is, is, is actually using sensor. And this is a, another great, great opportunity to have an economy uh, which, is, which, is, which is an Indian economy, uh, which will be, uh, uh, which can actually cater uh, and provide demand to future entrepreneurs who are going to build uh, distributed computing uh, based cloud. So my third is texture of data uh, should be the central theme of, of how you want to do business. So, so, they, so, 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 so cloud computing uh, or, or, a, or a data centers can cater and uh, to uh, to intelligent uh, financial services, uh, intelligent uh, you know adaptive ad adaptive manufacturing, and and so on and so forth. Uh, intelligent healthcare. It should not be just about hey you know I basically store data. I basically provide uh, you know uh, different flavors of knock sock and anything in between. Uh, you know it has to go up in a value chain depending upon texture of data. That's my third point. My fourth point is is basically a hope and a request that we should be able to break uh, into a zone where everyone talks about by greener sources of infrastructure. A uh, lot of people talk about Scandinavian countries make a lot of effort, um, but by the nature of our population and, and the demand, uh, I think we need to seriously think about uh, organic, very, very India-centric uh, greener sources of data. Um, two aspects of it, most of equipment, uh, you know, and, that's a, and that would be a new market and a new industry uh, which can actually dictate the world, a rare earth, uh, a rare uh, metal, rare earth free uh, equipment. Uh, okay. uh, I think India can do a lot of R&D in that, a lot of money should flow in that, that kind of R&D and we should actually build equipments which are uh, rare metal free. Second, uh, compute power generation, um, you know, should be more and more derived. We still have, um, uh, we, are, uh, we are a highly, highly diverse country. We should be able to find ways of deriving power and make it, make it cheaper and cheaper, specifically from the perspective of uh, what is the power requirement and cooling aspect of large, large, multiple uh, football size, uh, you know, compute centers. Uh, so I thought these four things which I will share, I already have a huge hope, you know, if, if government of India is thinking in terms of uh, blockchain uh, policies and all that stuff, you know, that's a, that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, news. And when, when, when folks and leaders like Manoj, uh, they basically talk about future um, of, of compute and, 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 they, and they use word cloud and they want to do more, uh, more than just cloud. Um, uh, I, I think I, I, I'm bullish, uh, you know, uh, that India... Uh, should lead um, and not just look at what's happening in the Western world, should lead both economically and also from uh, the equipment which is required for infrastructure uh, to build uh, future uh, data centers. Uh, that's all I have to say, Shashi. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, and Thank you. Thank you, Reviji. I think uh, you should also meet the secretary next time and be part of the panel to guide him with Manoj and you people can, you know, give him more ideas and the policies which he is making it as Manoj said that soon that um, policy he has already guided and the secretary is coming out with. I think you should also meet the secretary soon so that you know a good policy is out from the Ministry of IT. I am sure that DOT is still uh, this thing where Manoj just said that DOT things has to be there. I am sure the secretary DOT will also look into those policies. I just said add, that. Yeah. No, no. Add, uh, very, very, very well uh, put up all things. Uh, I just like to add that power in India nowadays, with all the concessions that are coming in and stability of power rate, which has not gone up for the last three, four years, and some rationalization between uh, residential power and industrial power, actually, the power rates in India is a little lower than even Hong Kong, Singapore, and some major cities in US. Of course, there are some cities in US, some areas which have much cheaper power. To that extent, we can be really competitive even on power uh, sector also with the surplus that we already have. I just thought I'll just add to that. No, I, you know, I totally, thanks for bringing, I, I totally agree. You know, I'm actually surprised that it took 14 years for us to realize our own power. 
you know, as, as a compute power. And, you know, uh, somehow we don't find it, uh, you know, data center industry as interesting. But as Shashiji pointed out, and, and as Secretary basically mentioned, I think if, if, if we can actually conquer the world, and I, and I really mean that, you know, I talk to 10 to 12 startups um, on, on a, on, on every day. And at least 40% of those startups have to do something with sensors, you know, either in an IoT space or in some, some space, which is, we are talking about a high, high demand of compute. And, and if, we, if, we, if we let go that compute to people or companies outside of India, that would be such a shame because, you know, we have everything in our favor today. So, so thanks for pointing that out. Totally agree. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reviji. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Now, uh, Menika, can we run the video of uh, Neeta, madam, please? Good morning, everyone. It is indeed my pleasure to speak at the seventh edition of Data Center's virtual conference. Digital transformation has really spurred the digital economy and today there are a whole lot of digital services which are influencing the lives of citizens in many ways. We are focused on technology which is now accessible, affordable and easy to use. Today Indians are among the major consumers of social media around the world. Social media platforms have brought in gigantic amounts of data which is now being used to generate valuable insights. The entire consumer experience is today customized through these patterns that the data generate. With almost 500 million plus smartphone users in India, we are truly at a momentous phase of a digital revolution in the country. Even if you see, even the size of digital economy in India is estimated to grow from dollar 200 billion in 2017-18 to dollar 1 trillion by 2025 thus there is a growing business need for cloud hosting services and applications enterprises in india have now adopted cloud computing as an integral part of their business strategy and therefore there is a tremendous surge in the demand of cloud computing Applications of emerging technologies such as IoT enabled devices, artificial intelligence models, machine learning algorithms, AR, VR are further increasing the need for cloud requirements across various sectors. Physical infrastructure ensuring the provision of robust and resilient digital services is the data centers, thus making it an essential service in today's times. In the recent times of COVID-19, the need for stronger IT infrastructure around us has further accelerated many fold. Right from teleconsultation to teleeducation to commerce to entertainment, digital technologies are touching our lives in almost every sphere. With so much of our technology around us, establishing a robust IT infrastructure is a must-have. Need for data localization further affirms the increasing demand of data centers establishment in India. Therefore, Government of India has recently come up with a draft policy on data center, which, also, which was also available for public consultation few weeks ago. Focus of this policy is on establishing India as a global data hub and propel a digital economy growth. India also offers advantages of having a favorable geographical location, availability of economic resources, established global connectivity, easy and cost effective access to power and most important readily available technology professionals. The new policy proposes sustained and trusted data center capacity to meet the growing demand and strengthen India's position around the world. Policy also encourages participation of domestic startups, MSME and other Indian IT companies. While we need to work on a strategy to have a large footprint of India to establish itself as a power hub of data centers in the world, 
we also need to improve efficiency of our existing data center infrastructure. So, to increase the efficiency of existing data centers, we need to encourage use of latest tools and technologies. Increased efficiency can also be achieved by use of smart devices, sensors, reducing operations cost by automating the routine processes. Cloud enablement of existing data center resources can also give a high order of efficiency and also improve the services to end user. Use of emerging technologies such as AI ML, AR VR can also help in enhancing the availability of data centers and improving the security posture. Some of the ex key strategies that need to be adopted so as to ensure a conducive ecosystem for growth of data centers in India could be providing infrastructure status to data center sector similar to the sectors such as railways, power, thus bringing the benefits of availing long-term association from domestic and international stakeholders. We could also set up a pre-provisioned data center parks or data center economic zones where the states may declare specific land zones to set for setting up data, such data centers. Another area if you see, many would not want to establish or invest in creating the infrastructure. This is where we can think of some sort of plug and play model which will provide access to land parcels, power availability and lower costs, high capacity network and other important requirements. Formulation of data center incentive schemes could be another strategy where physical and non-physical incentives could be provided to data center industry. Lastly, once while we get ready to make ourselves a global data hub, we also need to pay attention to skill building. While we surely have a large number of technology professionals, but to be able to provide state of our data center services, cloud services and all associated services around it, we need to reskill, upskill our existing workforce to be able to offer the world a real comprehensive cloud services, data center services and make India truly a global data hub. Lastly, I like to thank the organizers for inviting me here for this conference and I wish all of you uh, a great conference, a very useful and meaningful deliberations and panel discussions and I hope all of you are keeping safe and taking care of yourselves with all precautionary measures against COVID-19. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much to all the distinguished speakers, delegates. Now we